uh, Sabine Hassenfelder. I don't know if you're familiar with her. She uh, she, she wrote this book uh, that I need, I need to read, but it based, I, f- I forget what the title is, but it's uh, Beauty Leads Us Astray in Physics is a subtitle or something like that, which so much about what we're talking about now, like the simplification is a, uh, to us humans seems to be beautiful. Like there's a certain intuition with physicists, with people that a simple theory, like this reducibility, pockets of reducibility is the ultimate goal. And I think what she tries to argue is, uh, no, we just need to come up with theories that are just really good at predicting physical phenomena. It's okay to have a bunch of uh, disparate theories as opposed to trying to chase this beautiful theory of everything is the ultimate beautiful theory, uh, a simple one. You know, so it's always, what's, your, it's always, what's your response to that? Well, so what you're quoting, so I don't know the Sabine Hassenfelder's, you know, exactly what she said, but yeah, I mean, might the, be misquoting the well, exact, let, I'm let quoting me, the let, title of her book. <laughs> okay, well, let me, let me, let me respond to what you were describing, yeah. which may or may not have anything to do with what, uh, yeah. you know, what Sabine Hassenfelder says yeah. um, or thinks. Um, Sorry, Sabine. The, <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry the, for misquoting. Um, but I mean, the, the question is, you know, does, is beauty a guide to whether something is That's correct? Right. Right. Which is kind of also the story of Occam's razor. Right. You know, if you've got a bunch of different explanations of things, you know, is the thing that is the simplest explanation likely to be the correct explanation? And there are situations where that's true, and there are situations where it isn't true. Sometimes in human systems, it is true because people have kind of, you know, in evolutionary systems, sometimes it's true because it's sort of been kicked to the point where it's minimized. Um, but, uh, you know, in physics, does Occam's razor work? You know, is there a simple quotes, beautiful explanation for things, or is it a big mess? Um, you know, we don't intrinsically know. You know, I think that the, I wouldn't, before I worked on the project in recent times, I would have said, we do not know how complicated the rule for the universe will be. And, and I would have said, you know, the one thing we know, which is a fundamental fact about science, that's the thing that makes science possible, is that there is order in the universe. I mean, you know, early theologians, would have used that as an argument for the existence of God. Because it's like, why is there order in the universe? Why doesn't every single particle in the universe just do its own thing? Yeah. Um, you know, something must be making there be order in the universe. We, you know, in in the sort of early theology point of view, that's, you know, the role of God is to do that, so to speak. In our, uh, you know, we might say it's the role of a formal theory to do that. And then the question is, but how simple should that theory be? And should that theory be one that, that you know, it, where I think the point is, if it's simple, it's almost inevitably somewhat beautiful in the sense that because all the stuff that we see has to fit into this little tiny theory. Yeah. And the way it does that has to be, you know, it, it depends on your notion of beauty. But I mean, in, in for me, the, the sort of the surprising con- connectivity of it is, at least in my aesthetic, that's something that uh, no, you know, responds to my aesthetic. But the question is, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're a fascinating person in the sense that you're at once talking about computational, the fundamental computational reducibility of the universe. And at, on the other hand, trying to come up with a theory of everything, which s- simply describes the, the, the simple origins of that computational reducibility. Right. I mean, both of those things are kind of, it's paralyzing to think that we can't make any sense of the universe in the general case, but in, it's hopeful to think like, one, we can think of a rule and uh, that generates this whole complexity, and two, we can find uh, pockets of uh, reducibility that are powerful for everyday life to do different kinds of predictions. I suppose Sabine would wants to find, focus on the finding of small pockets of reducibility versus the uh, theory of everything. You know, it's a funny thing because, because you know, a bunch of people have started working on this, this you know, physics project, people who are, you know, physicists, basically. Um, and it is really a fascinating sociological phenomenon because what, you know, when I was working on this before in the 1990s, you know, wrote it up, Put it. It's a hundred pages of this twelve hundred page book that I wrote. New kind of science. It's, you know, a hundred pages of that is about physics, 
right? I, I saw it at, in that, at that time, not as a pinnacle achievement, but rather as a use case, so to speak. I mean, my <laughs> yeah. main point was this new kind of science, and it's like, you can apply it to biology, you can apply it to you know, other kinds of physics, you can apply it to fundamental physics. It's just, it's just an application, so to speak. It's not the core thing. But, um, but then, you know, one of the things that was interesting with that, with that book was, you know, book comes out, lots of people think it's pretty interesting, and lots of people start using what it has in different kinds of fields. The one field, where there was sort of a, a heavy pitchforking was from my friends, the fundamental physics people, yeah. which was, it's like, no, this can't possibly be right. And, you know, it's like, you know, if what you're doing is right, it'll overturn 50 years of what we've been doing. And it's like, no, it won't, was what I was saying. And it's like, um, but, uh, you know, for a while, when I started, you know, I, I was going to go on back in 2002, well, 2004, actually, I was going to go on working on this project and I actually stopped partly because it's like, why am I, you know, this is like, I've been in business a long time, right? I'm, I'm building a product yeah. for a target market that doesn't want the product. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. it, why work? Yeah, yeah. Why, the, why work against the swim against the current or whatever? Right. But, but you see what's happened, which is sort of interesting, is, is that so a couple of things happened. And it, it, was, it was like, uh, you know, it, it was like, I, I, I don't want to do this project because I can do so many other things which I'm really interested in, where, you know, people say, great, thanks for those tools, thanks for those ideas, etc. Whereas, you know, if you're dealing with kind of a, a uh, you know, a, a, a sort of a structure where people are saying, no, no, we don't want this new stuff. We don't need any new stuff. We're really fine with what, what we're doing. Yeah, there's doing. like literally like, I don't know, millions of people who are thankful for Wolfram Alpha. A bunch of people wrote to me how thankful they are. They are a different crowd than uh, the theoretical physics community, perhaps. Yeah, well, right. But, you know, the theoretical physics community pretty much uniformly uses uh, yeah. Wolfram language exactly. and Mathematica, right? And yeah. so it's it's kind of like, like um, yeah. uh, you know, and that that's... But the thing is, it is what happens, you know, this is what happens. W mature fields do not, you know, it, it's like we're doing what we're doing. We have the methods that we have and we're, we're just fine here. Now, what's happened in the last 18 years or so, I think, is a couple of things have happened. First of all, the, the hope that, you know, string theory or whatever would, would deliver the fundamental theory of physics, that hope has disappeared. That the, another thing that's happened is the, the sort of the interest in computation around physics has been greatly enhanced by the whole quantum information, quantum computing story. Mm -hmm. People, you know, the idea there might be something sort of computational uh, related to physics has somehow somehow grown, and I think you know it, it's it's sort of interesting. I mean, right now, if we say you know it's like if you're like who else is trying to come up with the fundamental theory of physics? It's like there aren't professional, no professional, no professional physicists.